Photographers are much like locusts. They make love in the wilderness. They make sounds as you walk past them in the forest. They look weird. They look ancient, like they were dug up by an archaeologist. They seem intelligent. They're carrying around supercomputers, but they're not. They're asking a vlogger for help, and I will help them. I don't judge. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I'm a YouTuber today. We got a light bouncing into a mirror, closet of mystery, my softbox in the shot. I've made it. I've also hidden a microphone cleverly out of the shot. It's just above here. As it reaches down, it allows me to get better audio, and you can't even tell you're listening to that. Was that your question? Hi Casey, still saving up for the S5 you told me to avoid in the Patreon Q&A down below. Only a dollar a month, every month we make it happen. Q&A video, thank you for advertising. That's the only reason I save your question. Just wondering if you think there are some interesting third party lenses for travel nature, event photography, and videography. It's probably boring and outside of your vlogging expertise. Oh, but let's ask anyway. But you keep browsing the demon store, so I reckon you could know. What are you, we, for the S5, third party? Don't even think about it. Look, here's the deal. Panasonic, fantastic company. They refuse to autofocus, that's fine. That's on them. When I tried the S1H, it was a Panasonic lens that I used and it seemed to not hunt. It was smooth, it was like, that's why I was so excited to get the S1 from Flat Earth Santa. Sorry I disappointed you and didn't love it as much as I thought I might. Because I had a Sigma lens, third party, even though they're in an alliance. That's a team of misfits. So it doesn't work. So you have to get a Panasonic lens. May I suggest you just get a Sony lens. Realize it doesn't screw on and then throw your camera out, get a Sony camera. Panasonic's cool and all, I just, I could never feel comfortable investing into the system, knowing that the autofocus will fail completely. So, your lens doesn't exist. Need a camera for general hybrid use as an enthusiast, with more focus on video, particularly talking head, product, and food videos. Autofocus should be great. Shortlisted, Fuji X-S10, Sony A7C, A6600. What will you advise? I've tried so many different camera systems and it always comes back to, is that autofocus reliable? Can I trust this camera to not lose my ass? When I use my Fuji, it loses my ass sometimes. And it's really annoying and it, you look so amateur. The colors are nice, but let's not forget, you can change any camera to look like any other camera. It takes some work and knowledge, that sucks. But with that Cinematch profile or program, you just like type in Sony to Canon R5. That's what I've been doing for the last year. And it looks good to me, I think. And it's one LUT, you can create a LUT, so it's the same as putting on any other LUT. And so I'm like, oh, the Fuji look. It's like, who cares? I could get a Fuji look out of this. Boom, Fuji look. Oh, well, we have a Fuji look now. Was it better? Should I switch from Canon R5 to Fuji? I will. So go with the camera that has the features you need. And for me, it's either Sony, maybe Canon's up there too. Nikon could do it if they had a flippy screen. Ah, go with Sony, Sony a7C. For lenses, talking head shit, either the 20 mil 1.8 is fine. Like who cares, you can switch it up. I'm using the 15 mil right now, Tony 4. Like who cares, have some fun with it. I like that Battis, 25 mil Tony 2. Why'd I point over there, it's right here. I got a text. You have to decide the look you want. Like my favorite look is the Zeiss 55 mil. I love that, but it's inconvenient to use because I'd have to go way back there. I'd have to bring this mic and light closer to me. It's like, it's a pain in the ass to produce content like that. So wide is fun, but this is a bit much. It's a bit distorty and weird. So like 24 mil is kind of the sweet spot, eh, but it's a little expensive. So 20 mil is just as good. Casey, I have the EM53 with Zuiko. 12 to 45, Tony 4. On the way. Oh god. It takes about three months to get to the Philippines. Intended use similar 
to you in Thailand. Inside some talking head. Why would why the Tony Four for a talking head? Come on, like I'm on a Tony Four full frame. The Tony, it's gone. So talking head, mostly walking around, vlogging, some travel. Hey, look over there. Zoom in. I get it. I'm with you. How bad or good do you think my purchase was? That's a tough one, man. The lens is not my favorite because it's not enough reach really to look at that. You're not gonna see that. I would have got the 12 to 200. I sent mine back because of the stiff zoom ring. So hopefully I get a replacement and it's smooth. If not, oh God, I switched systems entirely and abandoned this Olympus piece of shit. I love it, but I hate it too. I'm sure you'll get by fine with your lens, but it's just, it's nothing to write home about. Tony 4 on a micro four thirds is pretty unmagical. You almost should just be on a GoPro at that point. It just, it won't look very nice. Not much separation, but honestly, like the 12 to 200 is 3.5 on the wide end. And it's enough, Tony. It's not much, but it's enough. You might get by, but just, I would just sell that lens immediately, get the 12 to 200. Then you got real zoom. All right, we got a list here. We got two cameras, Panasonic G81. Is that my G85, but in a different language? I think it is. With a bunch of bullshit lenses with the equivalents. What are you doing to my brain right now with the equivalents? I have no idea what lens you're even talking about now. Never write that. And then the Panasonic FC1002. That's a piece of shit. Why are you choosing Panasonic? What do you even shoot? I film people in studios, so stabilization is not important to me, so I'm choosing Panasonic with the best stabe in the business and worst autofocus. Will that work? You're a moron. I would like to ask you three questions. What does the smaller sensor have? Why does the smaller sensor have more megapixel? Who the fuck? What should I get if I only had these two options? What would you get if it was me with a budget of 1500 euros? Like I know what that means. Germany, bless us all. Why are you doing this? If the people you film in studios never move, then okay, you can manually focus on somebody, but just why? Like, I don't understand why the G81, it does nothing. And that stupid lens, why do you need to zoom that far? How big's your studio? I hope you get lost in it and a kangaroo latches onto your cookies and takes them. If I had to film people in a studio, like it's just interviews, that's what it sounds like you're doing. I would want reliable autofocus. I'd go like Sony A7C with, I don't even know what lens I would pick. Maybe a zoom of some sort, Tamron 28 to 75 and you just set it up, you're done. It's like good autofocus. It's close to your budget. It's in the market of your budget. If not, then like Sony a6400 with a bullshit lens. I hate your problem, we're moving along. Damn it. I want it to be the first to drop a comment. What is the best full frame camera? Has IBIS and good in low light and good for run and gun. Best full frame? You're looking at it. You could run any guns anywhere. If it's me looking for a full frame camera right now, to like go outside and film stuff. I would want this. You didn't give me a budget, so boom. Sony a7S 3 If I had to step it down a notch, a7C could be potentialized. It's good enough. You could go Canon, get an R6, spring for an R5 even. If you don't have to film yourself, even the Nikon systems would work. Almost any camera. Nikon. A6400 or ZV E-mount 10, using Catalyst for the Stabe for short vlogs. Who's ever gonna do that? For every video, you wanna take all your clips. Oh, I have 17 clips. Okay, I'm gonna stabilize each one of those and you're sitting here for an hour and a half, you're gonna fall asleep. You're not even gonna wanna edit your bullshit show of your walking your dog to get groceries for your cat. If it's me, I'm not even looking at those options, but those are the only ones you gave me. There's no advantage to the A6400. The ZV-E10 at least has the fully articulating screen and it has digital stabe if you need it, which could come in handy if you need to zoom, but it's such a large crop. Ah, they're bullshit. But since you're using Catalyst Browse, since it's so sustainable, yeah, we'll see you at 10,000 subs. 
I'd go with ZV E10. It's the same exact camera. There's almost nothing to it. Just which body do you prefer? I think the ZV E10 is cheaper and lighter. Don't quote me on that. Saw a Nikon Key Mission 170 action cam sitting on store shelf for 12 months. Owner says, make him a reasonable offer. Should I offer $80 doing travel vlogs? I just, I've never tried it. Maybe it's the best thing ever, but it just, it had such terrible reviews. Like people were like, this is a nightmare for Nikon. What were they thinking? So I think it's like the worst thing ever made, but like there's that Olympus TG tracker they have an action cam too and it's shit. It's absolutely terrible. So I don't know why those two companies just failed so hard at action cams. Ah man, I'd go DJI Osmo Action all the way. At least it's reliable. It's not gonna freeze on you like a GoPro would. Sony X3000 of course, decent, but I think I prefer the DJI. It's got the mic jack, fantastic. Do not even think of offering money for that piece of shit. It could be fun, like I would buy it just to make a video on how bad it is, but yes, I did switch lenses. We're on the Zeiss Battis, 25 mil tone two. Hey Casey, what's better for vlogging, EM1 Mark II or EM5 Mark III? Please help, EM5 price is higher. The only thing you get in the EM5, I do believe is 120 frames per second. It's not very good, but it might be fun to have that. It's lighter and cheaper. But then there's no auto ISO in video. I think there's hacks to do it. Like you got to go in photo mode, auto ISO, and then switch to video or something. It's weird. EM1's the better camera, but it's older. They both suck. Like, would you really buy them? I actually recommend them all the time. They're good cameras. You can't go wrong with them. If it was me, I'd probably lean Mark II just so I know I can use auto ISO in video. EM5 has the slow-mo though. It's too bad the EM13 wasn't on your list because then you get the best of all worlds. You get your slow-mo and the better stuff and auto ISO. And, uh, go for the EM12. Upgrading from GH4, which one should I get? EOS R or GH5? Oh man, oh that hurts. A lot of people preferred the G9 to the EOS R in my comparison. Like a lot of people, they were shocked. And when I look back at it, I'm like, yeah, G9 looks better. Like there, it's a better quality image and you might notice it, but you put the right lens on it, on the EOS R, then it can blow the G9 away. G9 wasn't on your list. If it was me, I'd be abandoning Panasonic, but that's me. I like autofocus and usability and fun. Panasonic's allergic to all three. I'd get the EOS R for sure. There's something about full frame though. Once you go there, it's hard to go back to crop bodies. Not really, like the Fuji with a 1.4 lens looks good. It looks decent, even too blurry of a background almost. So I'm nitpicking, but there's something about it. Full frame is magic. I'd go EOS R. I almost bought one owning a Sony a7S III. That's how bad I wanted Canon colors, but we have them now. All right, last question, who would win in a fight Tony Northrup or Curtis Judd? Oh, that is a tough one. That's a tough one, because Tony's smart. He's smarter, I think. He could plan out escape routes and shit. He'd know exactly where to hit Curtis Judd right on the neck. But Curtis Judd would hear it coming. He would hear the attacks. He's an audio professional. He, as soon as he could fight blindfolded if he wanted to, and he would, he would demand it. And then Tony goes for the attack and he can hear it. He just, what's wrong? Why can't you hit me, Tony? Plus Tony's blind, he can't see. He sees in Tony. So it's like, I gotta go Curtis Judd on that one. He has the home field advantage. He'll hear you coming, great eyesight. He's like Irish looking. They, they fight weird like this. Curtis Judd, put my money, put $10 on it. So I've helped you all so much. It just feels good to be able to give back and just improve your lives. So thank you for asking the questions. I do have like 10 more for the next series and I do these for some reason. It's just fun. I'd rather make a video answering questions than type them out. It's bullshit. Which lens did you prefer today?
Which t-shirt are you buying? Fuji? Or others? There's lots. I'll leave. Subscribe?